Let's collect them all and let's talk about collections. Alright, we found ourselves back in Teller once more, and in this tutorial, we're gonna be talking about collections. So collections are in a very broad sense, well, they are basically a better cousin or a better brother of the array. They allow you to do uh vastly more things with them. They are dynamic and they are pretty freaking awesome. So before I ask you when we were talking about arrays, to think of them as lists. Now the astute of you might say, well, wait a second, there is already a list available, and that is true. If we start typing in list, you can see it suggests to us the list over here from Java Util with this angle bracket and this E. What we can do is we can hit the tab key over here, and that is going to import something. So this is the same idea that we had with the scanner. So when we make a list, we have to actually import something, and then we need to do the angle brackets over here. The second one generates automatically, and whatever is written inside of this is actually the list of the type that we're making. So in this case, we can make a string list and you can see that can then be, let's say, more questions equal to a new. And you can see that once again, when we type new, it suggests to us the array list. This is actually the one that we want to take. So we can hit once again, tap over here to autocomplete, end it with a semicolon and there we go. And we have more questions right here. However, we have not specified how many elements are going to be in this list. And this is the awesome thing about the list. You do not have to specify how many elements are in there because it is dynamic. You can simply say more questions is the list variable. If I hit tab to autocomplete, I can then call the add method right here. And I can simply add something. What website hosts most videos in the world. Bam. And I've added this and now the list is one element long. So whatever we've added right here, once again, remember this is index zero because we still start counting at zero. And there are plenty of more things that you can do when on a list over here. I highly recommend you take a look at a few of them. We're going to see another one in a second over here. For example, you can clear this list, right? So if I call this, then all of a sudden the list is cleared and it is empty. But there are plenty of different things that you can do with lists over here. But I want to actually show you a couple of different collections because they have a couple of different use cases, basically. But the one thing I also want to show with a list is, let's say we want a list of integers. If I were to write list int over here, and let's say this is going to be points on tests, let's say, and I make a new array list over here, what you'll find is that we get a whole bunch of errors. The reason is that we cannot use the primitive type over here this integer, we have to use the integer over here from java.lang. So we want to basically autocomplete this and you can see now everything works and I can add normal integers. So I can just type in, you know, 19 and maybe the second test was 55 and maybe you got better at 78. So that all works fine, but you, but you have to realize that you can't use the orange names, right? The primitive data types int and boolean and stuff like that. You have to use the class version of it just so that you know that you've seen this before because that might come in handy at some point. What other types of collections might there be? Well, there also is a set. And you can see, once again, it suggests this to us. We're going to autocomplete this. And in the angle brackets, we're going to write in the string over here. And this is going to be the countries to visit over here. This is going to be equal to a new hash set. That's going to be fine. There are different types of other sets over here. But we're going to just use sort of the bare bones ones, the ones that are going to be easiest. Now, a set is defined. And you can actually hover over this as well. There's a long definition over here. You can see. But overall, a set is just defined as basically a list that cannot have duplicate elements. So if we have countries to visit and we're going to add, let's say, France over here. Maybe you want to visit France. Who knows? Let's duplicate this a couple of times. Let's say we also want to visit Germany and Spain over here. And then France again, because we are just so excited to visit France, right? You can see that it actually already says to us, hey, duplicate set element. And that actually is not going to be added. So if I were to do system out print line and I say countries to visit and I would run this, what you will find is that the there are only three things in the set, France, Germany and Spain, because France cannot be added twice. The set can be useful for a lot of different things in computer science, especially. But even when we're talking about, you know, Minecraft modding, game development, stuff like that, there are definitely places where a set might be very useful. But what might also be useful, this is pretty crazy, is a map. So if we start typing in map, you can see this now has an angle bracket and it has K comma V, right? We once again import this. And in the angle bracket, the first data type, let's say a string, and the second one is an integer. Now, a map is fr pretty freaking cool, right? Because what a map does is it maps one thing to another. So, for example, in this, we can say this is the country to population map, right? Once again, this is going to be a new hash map here in this case. And what we're going to do is we're going to do we're going to do country to population map dot put. So this is not an add that we have to do, but a put. So we're going to put this into the map. And the US, we're going to say USA 
And then this is going to be 331 million. There you go. That is going to be the population of the USA. And the idea is that when you have this map available, you can pass in the, the USA string right here, which is called the key, and you get the value of this out. This is really freaking useful and can be used for all sorts of things. So we can once again duplicate this, let's say two times. And let's say this is going to be the United Kingdom. And that one has 76330000. There you go. And then we have Austria, let's say, because we got to, you know, got to mix it up over here. And they have 895000. There you go. Actually, another zero. There you go. And now with this map, you might say, well, okay, what am I going to do with this? Well, I can now do system out print line, let's say. And I can get the country to population map. And I can get something. And once again, in here, we now want to pass in the string over here. So let's say, for example, USA. And now I'm going to get out this number over here. So you can see, bam, I'm going to get out this number, which is pretty freaking cool. And the same thing goes, let's say I would put in Germany, but we don't have actually Germany in here, right? So let's say what, what would happen if I put in a key and it doesn't have a value for it? Well, then I'm just going to get a null right here. So basically it doesn't return anything. And I can also output the entire map over here. So let's say country to population map over here. Let's get this and you can see USA is equal to this. Austria is equal to this. United Kingdom is equal to that. So the general idea being that you can always take a look at the entire map as well, the entire collection over here, and it is very useful. Now, all of those you can also loop through, right? So if you were to have a for loop, right, or a for each loop, maybe even, there are some interesting things for this. Let's say, for example, start at the beginning here for the more questions, right? So we have an int i equals zero. I is smaller than, and we can do more questions dot size is this, this time, right? So it's no longer length, it is size. And we can then say system our print line more questions dot get. So we have to call the get method over here, passing an I, and then we can output that. Now it's going to complain to us that this is always false because we are clearing it right here. So let's actually populate it again right here. So let's do this and let's say, let's get another one in here. What is the capital of Germany? There you go. And if I were to run this, you can see, bam, we're going to get both of those output. So it works exactly the same as an array. However, it is dynamic. So you can add as many different elements as you would like. And it's just going to basically figure it out. Now, the set is a little more complicated. You cannot directly output a singular thing into in the set. So do keep that in mind. Putting out the entire set does work. So a set could, for example, be really useful if you wanted to compare something, right? So, oh, this were the countries I want to visit. These are the countries that I've already visited. You know, just output me the countries that I've not visited. Something like that, for example. And then when it comes to a map, there's a little bit of a more complicated way of outputting this. So basically, because this is a string, because this is a key value pair, right? You can think of it like that because you have a key and that unlocks a value inside of this map, let's say. So for the map, you want to use a for each loop. And the thing you want to use is the map.entry right here. This is the thing. And you actually can specify what the type of entry is as well. So let's say string and integer. And this is then going to be the entry over here. Once again, a colon. And then the map that we want to take a look at. So this would be the country over here. Now what you will see is that that does not work. You have to actually... You actually actually have to use the entry set over here. So this is the way to basically loop through a map. You get the entry over here. You can then get the entry set. And inside of here, you can use entry dot get key or get value to basically get either the key or the value out. So I can do system out print line and I can say key entry dot get key value and then say entry dot get value. There you go. And if I were to run this, you will see that we get key USA and the value is 331 million, Austria 8.9 million, and then United Kingdom. There you go. This is once again one of those things where I just highly recommend you play around with these different types of collections over here, the list, the set, the map. There are a couple more what you can always do if you're really interested in this. Now, this might be a little bit complicated, but it still could be interesting. You can middle mouse button click on this and it will actually open up the entirety of the class that is available over here. So you can read this and there are sometimes it is a little bit more complicated to read this, but it is possible if you really want to deep dive into things like this, then you can definitely do that. And as always, of course, I highly recommend you just play around with this a little bit. Just make a couple of sets, make a couple of maps, just output some stuff, make a couple of lists and just clear them and, and call all sorts of methods on them. Once again, with code, even if something breaks, you can always just do control Z and then see where you'll end up with that. But where we will end up next time is in this video, which is going to be the second exercise. Very interesting indeed. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.